Hello and welcome back to Uroru Niwa. My name is Mike Charlton. Last time we looked at some of the tooling that we might need to have in place when we're setting up our project. But I got some feedback from the first episode, which I thought was quite insightful in fact. And one of the things that the person said was that they found that I was jumping around a bit too much. And in fact, you might be wondering, you know, where's the elm in all of this? <laughs> and maybe if, if you're old enough to remember the old Wendy's commercials of where's the beef, when are we actually going to write some code? And we wrote a little bit of code, but really not very much. And I think it's quite easy to get sidetracked in setting things up and that kind of stuff. And we talked a little bit last time about the balance of having things efficient versus trying to get work done. And it is really a balance and you have to keep that in mind. And so since we've got an hour, really, and all we have is essentially Mike is great on the screen, which is, as far as I'm concerned, all we really need. But I think in terms of what we want to accomplish with our goal of uh, writing our game, it, it doesn't really uh, cut it. So. Today's episode is going to be about writing some code, and we're going to write some code. Normally, I tend to use a technique called test-driven development, but we're not going to use test-driven development today. We're just going to write some code, and we're just going to be hacking along. And I think next episode, I'm going to be introducing a test framework so that we can work in a more measured fashion. You'll be able to see kind of the differences between uh, working one way and the other. And I think probably what I'll do is I'll try and highlight various tools as we go, but probably I won't focus nearly as much on those things as I have on the first two episodes. Also, as I'm sort of aware that recording every Pomodoro is interesting, I may try and edit out some more things that are, are less interesting if I can. One of the things that people who are not really familiar with programming always, always wonder, why does it take so long? to implement things. And when you go and you see what I'm doing here, maybe give you some insight as to something you think, oh, that should take about five minutes, it really takes hours because you have all <laughs> this crazy stuff you have to do and all this kind of minutia that you have to deal with when you're working with it. But you don't necessarily need to see all of it as long as I point out along the way what I'm doing. So we'll try and be a little more focused in that way and we'll see how it goes. I, as Always, this is a work in progress, and I really value your feedback and criticism because that's how I can tailor the series to really suit what you want to see. I mean, that's the whole point of this, isn't it? It's not just for me to spend my time programming in front of a camera because I, I spend a lot of time programming. I enjoy it. Really, the point is for people to enjoy watching it. And so if you can tell me what you want to see and what you enjoy about the episode and what you don't enjoy as well, that really helps me a lot. So having said all of that, I didn't start my timer, which I probably should have, but ah, c'est la vie. So let's, let's get a Pomodoro started. So let's just do a full, full on Pomodoro and we'll get into doing what we need to do. So I'm just gonna quickly review what we have so far. So in the first episode, we set up Elm, we set up some instructions, we wrote a hello program. Well, we didn't so much as write it as steal it. And, and this, is, <laughs> I suppose it's not really theft in the legal sense, but yeah, it's plagiarism. We, we, we didn't write it ourselves. And then it looks like we finished that up in the fourth Pomodoro. So in the first Pomodoro last episode, we organized ourselves. We built a script to set up the path, which is a very good point. Let's just set that up as well. I forget what we called it. And I need to source it. I really didn't need to make it executable since I'm sourcing it. Uh, not quite sure where that right bracket came from. So, and really what this means is like, just run this in the context of my currently running shell rather than starting a new shell, running the script and then ending that shell because it doesn't really make much sense to start a new shell, alter the path of that shell and then end it. And that's what I was trying to get at yesterday. It probably wasn't so clear. Uh, next one is explain what the code is doing. We did that. Build an image rather than using a reactor. And so we now have HTML coming at the end. Although we couldn't quite figure out exactly how that Elm make was working, but I think we'll probably figure it out as we go this time. And then we made a nice Elm make file. So next on our list was to set up the directory nicely, which I may or may not do in fact. We'll see how it goes. And you know what I'm going to do as well? First of all, I'm going to just, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put sort of new lines. 
like that's not how you make a new line. In front of all of these, I don't want those NP spaces. If you ever see those pink spaces, that's just because it's um, telling me that I have spaces with nothing on the other side. And then I'm also going to the, we're going to just make this the back lock. And that way we know that it's not actually something we're currently doing. So I had this set up the directly nicely. Let's just see if that's really worth doing. Um, we have a source directory. Do you know what? I'm happy with it the way it is. I'm not going to do anything with that for now. We'll probably put that one back in once we have something to do. So now we need to display 15 points on the screen. So let's put that in our to do. We'll do that. That's probably pretty easy to do. Let's go into source. Let's do main elm. Now, one of the things I remember seeing when we were looking at examples of elm code is that I believe that this text actually takes an array. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start a REPL. Now, a REPL, essentially what it allows you to do is to kind of experiment with language by just typing at the command line, which is very useful. So if I just go like one plus one, it comes up with two. You know, and we can write functions and that kind of stuff. So it's quite useful for that. But what I really wanted to do is to explain what a array is. So here we have, or it's actually in Elm, they call it a list. But here we have a list and we can do things with this list. We can actually put things in this list. So let's put one in that list. So there we go. It's a list of numbers. So let's do three. So you can see it just makes a list of numbers and that's all it is. And that's what those, that's what those square brackets are. So it just makes a list of numbers. Now, if we, for instance, if you remember, there was a function called append um, which we used for our string, and it was it uses the operator plus plus. So I think we can probably append things to our list. Now I've run out of time, but I want to give this a try. So four, five, six. Oops, I need a comma here, otherwise it's going to complain. And there you can see it just depends it. And this is not a set. So if I actually go one, two, three, you'll see that it'll just say one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so it doesn't try to say you only have one kind of thing in each one. That would be called a set. It's just a list of things. Now, one thing that I can do is I can put in, I can put in characters. I'm not sure if that's actually, let's try that. Yeah, and that's a list of characters. There's also something called a list of strings. So the double quote is different than the single quote. What that means is that, well, with a single quote, I can just put single characters. So if I go like that, it'll just say, no, you can't do that. That's not a string. So it's a single character. Whereas a string, I can say A, B, and that makes a string. Now I can make an array of characters, A, B, or it's not an array, it's a list of characters. I can make a list of strings. So A, B, C, D. Yeah, I know I'm going over time here. I really shouldn't do this, but we'll do one more thing. One thing that I cannot do is make a list of numbers and characters or numbers and any other kind of thing. So basically, the list can only hold one kind of thing. If you want to hold numbers, it can hold numbers. If you want to hold strings, it can hold strings. If you want to hold characters, it can hold characters. We can't hold both at the same time. And this is different than some other programming languages, but that's not how it works in Elm. So I just wanted to show that quickly. So now I'm going to get my time minus BD, which I think I'll just type. What I want to do is go back to my to-do. Right, so we said we we're going to display 15 points on the screen, but what we actually did was that we, and I'm just going to put it, I'll put it at the top. Wait. What we actually did, actually it's done, is talk about race. And so that's done. I've uh, got this to-do list here we want to display the 15 points on the screen. But the reason I talked about the arrays is because what I, I don't really want to put it on the same line. So if you remember, 
we opened up our uh, this is actually I use KDE KDE in live to um, record this work um, which I highly recommend although it has many 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 bugs <laughs> but it is quite good it's quite complete and and quite good at doing what it does so let's go into Elm Beans again let's have a look at index.html so this is again our, our program running you can see it says welcome to Elm Beans Mike is great it's just sticking it all on the same line. And really what I want is I really want to make this kind of a heading and then I want to put up my 15 points. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my I'm going to change my to-do slightly. I'm going to actually add make a heading first and then we want to display 15 points on the screen. So our, our reflection is up. So let's get started. So this was actually Pomodoro 1. Now, in Pomodoro 2, and I'll put this back down into the backlog. There we go. You may think it's a bit pedantic to do all of that, but it really does help to organize yourselves. And I, I was actually working with uh, another colleague of mine. We're working on, on a very challenging piece of code, actually. One of the things that was really saving our, our, our collective butts is having that to-do list, because although it seems like, oh, it's kind of a waste of time, it just makes it so you don't forget stuff essentially and and it once you're getting into more complex things it really does help so i've only got four minutes left and i'm drinking some coffee i'm afraid ah it's very good it's very very good uh, one day I'll, i will do the the proper product placement to explain to you my coffee making techniques so welcome to elm beans we want to make this a heading and so let's have a look at some elm examples because, you know, we could read tutorials and all this kind of stuff, but, you know, it's just a heck of a lot easier just to look at some examples, I think. So here we have, like, basics, hello world, markdown, buttons, forms, rates. We're going to need this button at some point. I'm just wondering, like, for instance, let's have a look at this markdown. This looks interesting. Oh, that's pretty cool. That is really cool. So you can actually just generate markdown into HTML just like this. Wow, that is really, really helpful. That's super cool. Let's just see if this unordered list has a heading. It doesn't, but it's, I've got enough, actually, to be honest, that I can probably guess what I need. So I'm guessing, for instance, like, you notice this has li, text, ul, and this li and ul are just HTML things. So I bet you that if I just want to, if I just do an h1, it'll give me what I want. The other thing you'll notice here is that the function main, and then we have an equal sign that says, so this is the definition of the function here, is it has a ul, and then it has an array, which we saw before. The array runs this function class, which takes a string. And I know this is a function here because otherwise, you know, you always have to have the same things in the array. So I know just reading this, even though I have absolutely no idea about anything about this, but just looking at this, I know that this array has to contain the same types of items. And so so this has to be a function. It just has to be a function, and this is probably a parameter to that function. It returns some kind of object, which goes in this array. It then has another array, which contains all of these list objects. Or, again, this is obviously a function that takes an array and another array. So. This gives me some idea of what's going on here. And it appears as though I've got at the beginning here, I've got the first array has got the class in it. Now, HTML has these things called classes. And so um, it, it has like every kind of thing has a, um, in fact, if I just go over here and I kind of go inspect element, we can have a look. Now, I'm sure this is very, very small. I wonder if I can increase my font size. So you can actually see it? No, of course not. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's just really poor. Um, yeah, speaking of someone who has very poor vision, this kind of stuff drives me absolutely bonkers. Like, it's just tiny. I was like, how are you supposed to work on this? Anyway, enough griping. But you can see here, do you see how it has this UL class equals grocery list? And this class is kind of a tag for this UL element. And you can see the UL contains these li elements 
So basically what it's saying is that this UL, which stands for unordered list, is a grocery list. And it's, it's got the class grocery list. We won't talk that much about it, but that's what it looks like in HTML. And then you can see each one of these things has a, there's a list item. So LI stands for list item. So we didn't get very far in our Pomodoro. Again, we did more explanation more than anything else, but I'm going to go back to reflection and let's go back to our to-do list. So yeah, we were pretty unsuccessful in getting any code done because I'm talking too much. This is something that happens frequently with me <laughs> and I think with other people as well. So it's one of the things that, again, I need to back off from the explanation and let's get some, let's get some actual code written. Talk about HTML. We, that kind of sucked. So we'll try not to do that again. So we're into Pomodoro 3. I've got 30 seconds left. And it wasn't all useless. I mean, one thing we did do is what we, we now discovered as well, kind of the format that we need to do. And it's enough that I know how to do it. So maybe, in fact, actually. And then really, we talked about so let's get going now. I'm going to go back into my time minus D. One of the things that I really like about this power Pomodoro technique is the idea that it just interrupts you at five minutes. Now you can completely ignore it and continue on, which sometimes you really need to do, but it gives you a chance for that reality check to say like, wait a minute, am I really doing what I'm supposed to be doing? And in this particular case, it caught me up. It's like, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm not actually doing, I got carried away with something that's not related to what I'm doing. So just focuses you back in on what you should be doing. All right, let's give this a try. We don't know exactly how this works, but we've got a pretty good idea of what the, of what the structure is. I think I can do this. And I, you'll notice here that we need to get these functions, but I think I only need the H1 function. So let's just see if that works. And I don't even know, like I said, uh, it, you can see here that, yeah, we, we need text, but we also need, I think I'm going to guess that it's called H1 because that's what it is in HTML. So I'm just going to guess that that's how it works. It looks like I should be able to do this H1 and then I'm going to pass it an array. I'm not going to bother with any classes or anything like that. So I'll just pass it an empty array. Then following the I've got four space indentation, which is not how they're doing it, but we'll just do it like that for now. We'll set that up another day to get it right. We don't need a list item. We actually want text. I don't know if we, yeah, I guess we want text. And I think what I'm going to do here, I'm not sure if this is correct or not. So, but let's give it a go. Now, one of the things that's a bit strange about this about the way most people write Elm code is they put the commas on the following line. Some people really hate that. But honestly, I think once you get used to it, it's just like anything else. And I'm actually going to now do text Mike. Because why not? Let's see if that let's see how that works. And then we put the bracket on the end. So square brackets are called brackets and uh, these these round ones are called parentheses. Um, it helps when you're programming to know the difference. So all I've done is I've got, yeah, I've got an empty list and then I have another list that contains two text elements. And I don't think this is exactly what I want, but let's see what it actually does. So let's do L make. I'm hoping this will actually do compile. No, it doesn't compile it. So I don't really understand it. Let's see. Main.elm. So it compiled our main.elm and that's all I really care about for the moment. Oh, you know what's interesting is we have our module hello. I wonder if we should just change this to main. I wonder if that's what it's actually complaining about. What's this? Well, no, it doesn't seem to work. Yeah, weird, isn't it? All right, no problem. Let's see what happens. It didn't complain anyway. Um, well, that's actually, that's actually pretty good. So if we now again do our little right click on this and inspect the page, what we can see is we do have an H1 element and uh, it has two pieces of text called Welcome to Elm Beans and Mike is Great. But both of these are actually in the H1. So what I really want is I want to put Mike is Great 
underneath. And then we're going to actually replace Micah's grate by our point. So how am I doing for my Pomodoro? I've got one more minute. How do you do that, do you suppose? So this worked, this worked pretty well. It did exactly what it said on the box, right? We got our H1 and we put two text elements inside the H1. Now we need some kind of containing element for H1. And I'm wondering whether it's like a div or something like that. But I'm not really sure. Let's see if there's any other examples that show us what oh, we don't really need this anymore. Yeah, you notice here's here we have a div exactly like what I said. So a div is just a container in HTML. So I'm not sure if that actually makes much sense to put my H1 inside a div, but I don't really see any other way of doing it for the moment. And this probably will work. I've run out of time, but we can just get this done, I think. So let's do that. Um, we've got the, yeah, I don't really like this indentation. I think our indentation has actually been wrong the whole time. So let's move that back one. That makes more sense to me. Again, I don't really care about the classes or anything like that. And then I'm going to, yeah, I want that there. And I'm going to put the end, end, bra end bracket in because it's just convenient. I'm going to just grab that, paste it, and then let's push it over to, there we go. So now we've got a div with an H1 in the middle. And now what I want to do is I'm actually going to take this text mic out and I'm going to put it here. And again, let's just re-indent re that there. So that should do what we want. No, there's something wrong with this. This, hold on. I've got this wrong. Ah, yes, that's why. So I want that there like that and then I want that's that's what I actually want yeah indentation is important because if you get it wrong it confuses everybody so let's uh, make it it made successfully and let's see what it looks like boom and look at that it works exactly right so now we have a div. You can see here's a div here. I hope this really comes out in the video. It may be impossible to see, but you can see H1 is now Elm Beans, and then underneath we have Mike is Great. So we have succeeded in our nefarious plan. There we go. So we made a heading. Now, Pomodoro 4. Now we have our one minute retrospective. I thought that went fairly well. You may not have understood everything that I was doing, or in fact, you may not have understood anything I was doing. And that's perfectly okay. Maybe go back to the video. If you if you really in a point where you're like, I just didn't understand even one word of that. Go back to the video, try and pick out the words that you don't understand. You can even write them down and say like, I don't understand this word. I don't understand this word. I don't understand this word. Start to do some Google searches and read up about that and that'll give you some more background. The other thing you can do is that you can just start and implement this yourself. Just follow the same things. Go through the video and just try on your system. It'll be different than my system because I have a Linux box, but you might have a Windows box, you might have a Mac. Just install it for yourself. Try and get it working and that experimentation will help you essentially and it will build that model back up like we said in the second episode. So our times up now. One thing I want to say as well is if you run into problems, just put comments in the comment section and I will do my best to help you. I don't guarantee that I will find the answers for you, but you know, together, I'm sure we can find a solution to almost any problem. So, so don't hesitate to ask. I'm, I'm very happy to help out. And back to time minus D. So let's see, we've got now our backlog and let's display 15 points on the screen. Now, let me just have a look at what this decrement, the points when the user presses a button. All right, we're getting there, we're getting there. So let's see what we can do with these 15 points on the screen. This should be pretty easy, because I think what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to change the very nice mic is great to displaying 15 points. So we can literally go like this, make, and go back to here. There we go, points, 15, we're done. 
uncharacteristically quick. <laughs> That's done. Well done, us. All right. Now we need we need uh, when the user presses a button, go to the next turn. So I'm going to move this into here. But there's a subtask here, which I'll put in as well. So the first thing we want to do, it says when the user presses a button, decrement the points. So the other thing we need to do is we actually need a button on here, don't we? Now, that is probably not so difficult, but there is going to be a tricky bit. So right now you can see we're, we've got our text mic here and really we should probably refactor this slightly because mic is now let's make that point there we go and i wonder if i shouldn't just try to make it more consistent in terms of indentation now it's returning some text let's just run that actually there we go there we go let's just make sure that still works yeah it does it's kind of a waste of time each time to go and check every time, but you should do it. You should really do it. I'm going to take another sip of my coffee because it's delicious. You really need to check every time. Every time you make a change, you really should check, test if it works or if you've broken something. Because if you keep going along and going along and going along, it can become more and more broken. Then it's very hard to find out where you broke it. If you can tell right away that you've broken it, then it's quite easy to fix. So I'm already wasting huge amounts of time here. So what I want to do here is I don't really want text here now. I'm actually just going to change this. So now instead of instead of returning a string from this, I'm going to return whatever text returns. I don't actually know what text returns. See, this function takes a string and returns some object. I have no idea what it is. I don't really care. So let's make that. Actually, uh, well, we'll just see if it works first before I do anything. And there you see, it works exactly the same. So that's good. And I'm going to run the REPL again. I think I probably, in the REPL, I'm going to need to import um, the things that we have. So let me just... If I just say import HTML. Yeah, that worked. And now if I say, like, text like is great... Uh, boo, 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 boo. So maybe you want one of the following. Do I want HTML.text or String.left? I don't know why it's confused about whether or not I want HTML.text or String.left, but I definitely want HTML.text. There we go. And so you can see here it returned a kind of an object, right? Um, I don't know what this is really called. I think it's probably called a record, but it's uh, got a type that is of type text, and it has some text which contains Mike is great. And this is the actual type here. It's an HTML dot HTML message. So this is actually the whole type here. So it's an HTML message. You might not understand what that means, but that's completely fine. At least we have some idea. So I'm returning an HTML message from this. Again, just put that in your brain, and eventually we'll build the map up. Now I have my Pomodoro is over and I just completely forgotten whether that was a retrospective Pomodoro or not. I think it must have been. Let's let's. No, it was a normal Pomodoro. Did I really spend the whole Pomodoro doing nothing? I did. That's terrible. All right, so Pomodoro for. Oh no, I suppose we displayed to 15 points on the screen, and then we refactored points method to return a. HTML, HTML message object. I say rather. All right. So I think this is going to be the last Pomodoro for today. So I'm hoping we'll get that button. I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. Let's let's get our reflection in here. So when the User presses a button, go to the next turn. So we have to need to add a button to the screen. I'm just going to do this and I'll just use that as a heading. So basically, I just wanted to say I'm working on this thing. It's not done yet, but I've done this refactoring. And that's all I really wanted to say. 
with that, yeah, I think we're good to go. So we still got 20 seconds left to reflection, but I've been talking a lot anyway, so let's just keep going. I've got 10 seconds. We'll just steal those 10 seconds. Now, one of the things I think we need, and we can look at the example for buttons here, uh, but you can see it's really just the same. We've got a button here, right? We have a button here. They're using this beginner program with model view and update, and we will need that when we're decrementing these things, but we don't need it just to put the button on the screen. So I'm not gonna worry about it yet. And we could talk about that next time. So let's just start a new Pomodoro. Actually, we might get to it today. We'll never, never know. Instead of just text, we need a button. I'm just keep doing this in alphabetical order. Instead of our points, we need a button. And our button, again, is exactly the same thing as this. It has a function called onClick, which does something with this type here, this type decrement, which is probably not clear as to what that means. But we'll, I think we'll try that with making that empty. And then we have this text, which is obviously the label. So I'm going to put the next turn button right on the same thing with the points for now, just because it's it's useful. So I'm going to add a div, same as we had before. Stick the text in the div. So let's see. Let's see how that works. So I really just, again, I've just refactored it just to stick that into a div for now. Let's see how that works. Should do nothing on the screen, but when we look at, so here's the div that contains everything. And then here's a div that contains our points 15. You can see it's now in a div rather than just being uh, by itself. So that worked out well. And now what I want to do is I'm going to add a button with we're going to ignore that cryptic thing that we saw before because we don't know what it means yet. We'll add some text. I'm not sure why I bothered this. Let's, um, let's join that up because it, to me that looks a bit strange. Same thing here. It's weird as well. Actually, I could probably just join that there since it fits within my 80 columns. That's all, that's all good. And that's a little bit, I think that's a little bit more readable to be honest. To me anyway. Let's make that. Ah, we've made a mistake. So function button is expecting the second argument to be HTML, HTML message. And that's because I haven't actually put in a, um, a string. So text takes a, takes a string. And so what I've done is I passed it a function rather than passing it the result of this function. So let's say next turn. And there we've compiled it. All right, let's have a look at what it does. And then we have this nice next turn. It's kind of ugly in its position. We can probably do something about that, but let's put that in the to-do list uh, because I don't really care about it right now. I'm really caring about the functionality at the moment. So we add the button to the screen, which we have now done. It's good. Decrement the points when line the button. we can do that another time. So we've got 20 seconds left in the Pomodoro. Basically, we're done. I'm going to put this to do here. I'm going to actually put this back in the backlog. I'm going to put these back in the backlog. That way we won't forget about them. And I'm going to use this as a just a header here. That way we just don't forget what, what we're doing. If I just go in and close these, there we go. And this is our backlog. That's what we need to do next time. This is now our functional problem. The, uh, the button does nothing at the moment. We have 15 points. Welcome to Elm Beans. So we have actually done something with the code. And I hope it's given you kind of an idea of what we're doing. And it's not really so difficult, really. I mean, even if you don't understand what's going on under the hood, you know, you, it's a pretty mechanical process to just stick these things on the screen like this. Eventually, we're going to have to understand a little bit better, but we don't need to understand right away. So I hope you found it interesting. And next time, I think we'll probably get into trying to put in some test code, because while it's perfectly good to 
go on as we're going, especially with the type of stuff we're doing where we're just sticking stuff on the screen. Once we get to some actual functionality, we'll want to try to test the functionality without having to actually go through all the options like to come here. And if we get, once we get lots of buttons and everything, we want to test all the functionality. It takes a long time every time you make a change. So really what we want are some automated tests that does it all for us. And every time we compile, all of a sudden, we know whether we've broken something. And that's really a good place to be. Next time, we will continue on with that. This has been Uro Uro Niwa. My name is Mike Charlton. I'll see you next time.